guys and welcome back to another video. In this video, I thought it would be fun to tell you guys the true story of the snowflake man. So Wilson Bentley was born in the 1860s in a farm in Vermont. Vermont gets pretty cold and the farm was small, so he definitely didn't have a fancy life, especially in the winter. His dad was a farmer and he helped his dad on the farm, and his mother was a school teacher. Wilson never went to school. When it was time for him to go, his mom just taught him at home, and she used the books that she already had from the school. He also helped his dad around the farm and eventually became very good at farming himself. Right away, Wilson's mother noticed that he was really interested in studying. When all the other kids in his neighborhood would go out and play in the snow and uh, make snow angels, snowballs, and have snowball fights, all Wilson wanted to do was stay home and study. He was very, very smart, and everybody who met him said he just knew more things than anyone else they'd ever met. He loved reading, and he collected notes on everything he read. Later on, when he was an adult, his neighbors said that his room was so full of books and notes that you couldn't tell where the floor was. No one could find anything, but Wilson always knew where his things were. He just spent so much time in his office studying that it was like his second bedroom. As Wilson got a little bit older, his mom decided it was time to start teaching him about science, and one of the things she taught him with was a microscope. So a microscope is a machine that you can use to look at things that are too small to see with your regular eyes. And so she had one at school and she brought it home for him, and he suddenly loved it. All he wanted to do was look through this microscope. He looked at rocks, he looked at sand, he looked at raindrops, he looked at feathers, and he looked at hair from animals that he found around his farm. But the one thing that Wilson loved to look at more than anything else were snowflakes. He would take snowflakes and put them under his microscope and look at all the shapes that they made. And he realized that they had these very interesting geometric shapes. They weren't random shapes, they were always perfectly symmetrical, meaning they were the same on one side and the other side. And he noticed that they all looked totally different from one another. started trying to draw the pictures of the snowflakes that he was photographing. But snowflakes are really small and they melt really fast and so he was having a really hard time drawing these pictures. He was getting really frustrated because he felt like he could never draw a picture that was as pretty as the actual snowflake looked. So he begged his mom and his dad for a microscope camera. This was a special camera that had a microscope attached to so you could take a photo right through the microscope and take photos of these really tiny things. He wanted to take photographs of snowflakes so badly. But cameras were really expensive, and at this point in history, cameras were also huge. They weren't these little metal things like we have now. It was about this big, and you had to have these plates and strong lights and a big piece of fabric that went over the top. It was a big machine. But he managed to convince his parents to buy him one. And that winter, all he did was take photos of snowflakes. Wilson didn't really think he was doing any important science. He kind of just thought he was taking photos for the sake of it. Remember, he wasn't even a photographer. He was a farmer who just liked taking photographs. But a couple years later, somebody from a university in his area saw his pictures and was very interested in them. Wilson didn't know this at the time, but nobody else had ever taken photos of a snowflake through a microscope like that. He was the first person to do it, and he'd taken hundreds of them. These were going to be really important to scientists who were studying the weather. And so this man from the university convinced Wilson to send his photographs into a science journal. So this is a magazine that publishes all the new scientific discoveries. And the journal agrees with the professor and thinks that Wilson's pictures are really, really something special. And so they publish them. And this is the first time in his life that Wilson starts to get some recognition for what he's doing. And people are like, wow, these are some really awesome photographs. Over the next hundred years or so, scientists keep looking back at his photographs to figure out new things about the weather. 
From the shape of a snowflake, you can tell a lot of information about how and where in the sky it was formed. And so this was really, really, really interesting. But Wilson Bentley was still just a man on a farm with a camera. All he wanted to do was take the photos. And every year for the rest of his life, he spent every summer taking photos of raindrops and every winter taking photos of snowflakes. His neighbors said that they never saw anybody get more excited than Wilson Bentley about a snowstorm. As people around America and the world started noticing Bentley's work, they called him Snowflake Bentley, or sometimes just the Snowflake Man. After all, he was one of the most important people in finding out what we know now about snowflakes. All of his photographs are still used in research today and told us more than we could ever know without him. So this is what's really important and what's interesting about science, is sometimes even studying something that you don't think is that important will make a massive difference later on. Most of the scientific discoveries that we have now started because somebody just studied something that they were interested in. So if you're interested in bugs, or the sky, or math, or old paper, or anything, and you don't think it's going to be really important, go ahead and study it anyway. Because you never know, you could be the next snowflake man and really help the science world with something that you just really cared about. That's what's great about science, is if everyone cares about one little piece of the puzzle, you can put all of those puzzle pieces together and learn so much about the world. So the next time you're out in the snow, try to catch one snowflake on your mitten or on your tongue and look at the shape. If you look really closely, you can actually see the six points and you can even see little extra details in the shape. And think about Snowflake Bentley. I hope you enjoyed this story and I hope that it inspired you to think a little bit more about science. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.